Yeah, yeah. I'm Drew Hickman. I'm Jacob Griffin. And I, we are, I guess you could say, the leaders of the rocketry team here okay. at Tennessee Tech University. And um, as you're watching right now, we're actually gluing in our fins to our sustainer on our two-stage rocket. Well, as you can see over here, does it that is our booster that we actually finished today. Through the wall fin mounting. Um, and then right here, as you can see, we are right now attaching the fins to the sustainer. And as you can see, Jacob now is mixing a two-part epoxy, which is resin and hardener, five minute. And he's going to lather it onto the fin. Definitely don't have to be neat about it. No, not at all. Nice and messy. The more blue, the better. Because, you know, at the end of the day, you don't want your rocket's fins falling off. Is she going to charge that form? We're actually going to do something called tip to tip fiberglass um, over these fins, and it'll make them so strong that you can stand on, on the whole uh, thing. We are projected to be getting near the speed of sound. So, with that being said, go ahead and get a little bit more on there. With that being said, we want to make sure our fins do not come off whatsoever. I know. And we did. We are making this kit with a streamlined effect with the fin wise um, because for that reason, so they have not as much drag. And as you can see here, Jacob is just putting all the epoxy as much as he can onto the slot. And I'll just come in here, fit it in there, I'll get a t-shirt, push it up, and then he will give me an alignment. I think they can, they can, like you can bring them the t-shirt design. In about two minutes, this will be uh, cured up enough to where we don't have to sit here and hold it. Um, if you'll start cleaning out the back uh, slot here, I think it's, it it's going to make, here, I'll give them a glow. Yeah. So, as you can tell, we're pushing up the epoxy with our gloves to make sure that the epoxy and the fin are seamed together onto the rocket. My one problem is. And as you can see on that, it fills in all of the little imperfections onto the fin and the fuselage itself. Now this rocket is a through-the-wall fin mounting. So the, the rocket, as you can look right here, the fin mounts to the motor mount as well as the fuselage. So you get a good fit on it. And these fins are actually ready to fly as they are right now. But if you look behind you, there is a pile of fiberglass right there, and we'll be using all that fiberglass, well not all of it, most of it, on the fin can to wrap the fiberglass around it, and the rocket will be completely fiberglass on the fin can. So you got no issues, pretty much. We probably could make a good little video and show people how to fiberglass. Oh, yeah. yeah. Except this is epoxy. Well, it goes on the same way. It's wet in the glass. Our projections show that the booster will get this thing off the pad around 500 miles per hour-ish. And then when the second stage lights, so it'll separate. The second stage lights, it should be exceeding around the 700 mile per hour mark, which is right around the Mach area. <laughs> I have friends. Show you guys this too. Here is the brains of all this. So right here is our dual deployment um, altimeter, and this will be stuffed in the nose cone. It reads off barometric pressure and it has an accelerometer. So it will read off all of these numbers for us from how fast we're going, how high we went, and the duration of the flight. <clears throat> and then, if I can find it in all this mess, we actually have a, uh, a stager somewhere. I'm terrified it's going to be like three people and we're like, welcome to the stem center. <laughs> we can Elijah show you guys that one right there. I think Elijah had these working yeah. on it. Yeah. And there's also a little mechanism just like this, just a little bit smaller board, and it has a timer. It actually will fit into the sustainer and light the second motor off of time. So I think we're going to be saying the, the first stage burns for about 2.5 seconds. 
And um, after the 2.5 seconds goes, it will drag separate in a sustainable life right after 2.5 seconds. One cool thing about these uh, these rocket kits is uh, the booster actually is a modified version of this kit. This is called the Formula 29, and the number is the 54. Or, excuse me, the Formula 54. My bad. Um, and that's the outside diameter of the the rocket. And the stock, the uh, the motor mount is 29 millimeters, so it's about this big around. And for our booster, if you can see, we have a 38 millimeter motor mount. It's much larger than 29 millimeters. And so that's how we're getting such a kick off the pad, getting up to about 500 miles an hour uh, off the pad. So um, it's definitely going to be an interesting launch. Unlike anything anyone's ever done with this kind of a rocket kit. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> so, this is the said Tennessee Tech USRC Challenge test videos of the uh, APRA altimeter that we will be using for the competition, which will tell us our official altitude and velocity. And then in the next part of this video, I'll be showing me doing a swing test of the Perfect Flight Mini Timer. Uh, it was filmed yesterday. It works great and you will see that video after this. But right now we're going to do the jar test in which I create a vacuum in a piece of Tupperware uh, to test out the APRA Perfect Flight altimeter. So uh, whenever I boot it up, it'll give us the three to six digit number that is the altimeter altitude from the previous flight uh, it is important to say that it doesn't repeat the velocity. So once it gets turned off from the flight, you have to be you have to record it or else you lose the velocity information. So once I start it up, So that was a flight of 3,585 feet. Now it's reading off the voltages for me. So 11.8 is the voltage, so it's dropped from 12.2 from the last test. So it's important to note that these batteries do die quickly. So, But it's giving me the 30 seconds now to load it into the rocket, but in this case, this nicely glued Tupperware with straws on it. Um, I had to use two straws because they kept caving. I couldn't pull enough pressure without the straws caving, so the two of them actually gave it enough, and I didn't have anything other than straws. So now you can hear very faintly the chirp saying that it is ready to be launched. So, once I suck on these straws, it will think it's launching, it'll probably say some ridiculously high speed because I don't have that much of a control over my breath. So here we go. <sighs> Taking a deep breath. That was the whole flight. Now, I'm just gonna leave it in there and let it beep until it gets to the warbler because it's really loud that'll give me some time to prepare. So I'm really bad at counting, but I'm gonna to try to get off this information really quickly. Okay. Now I'm going to let it do the warbler sighing there and again, and then it restarts the loop over and over and over again until the battery dies. So it's really annoying, and now that I have double-checked the numbers, I've recorded it at the field once we find the upper stage of the rocket, we have good documentation of this altitude and velocity, more importantly. Uh, I'm going to disconnect it. And so. On the flight with the straw test, we reached a max altitude of 3,677 feet, 
which is funny because that's actually what I've been getting within about 100 feet on the past three previous tests. Uh, so that's roughly what my lung capacity can do with these straws. Now the speed changes a little bit every single time I do it, but it is almost always roughly a ridiculous number because I'm basically teleporting it to 3,600 and something something feet. So the mile per hour on that flight was 2,430 miles per hour. Terrifying at that speed. Um, so. So this has been a test. Um, you'll see the mini, the perfect flight mini timer test in the next clip. Thank you. And it seems to be good. So I'm going to go ahead and turn off the lights so that we can see it. Remember, it's a three-second timer, and we should see this bright LED light up after three seconds. Here we go. One, two, three, perfect. David. Yeah. So yeah, this is our super high tech. Actually, it is pretty high tech. It's just we didn't come up with it. Perfect flight mini timer. But you don't have to get me in the shot. Okay. <laughs> Here's our perfect flight mini timer. And this is how we're going to turn it on. It'll be upright. We're doing it just simply for ease. Now let's take that. And then it proceeds to. We're gonna. I don't want to do it too much because I have to take it apart. But basically, we'll take that and we'll stuff it in there with it on. And then the bulk plate cover will go over the top of it, just like that, and screw in place. Here's our nose cone with our altimeter attached to this wooden board, and it slides onto this threaded rod, and we attach it with a bolt. Then we go ahead and attach the nose cone to the shock cord, this plate. Sorry. And then at the very end here, what is that? And then right here is our uh, GPS tracker, in case it gets lost in the woods or something. And okay. Then it all gets stuffed into there. So yeah, it's spot for this one. Here's a little stick. And get most of the way Okay, cool. We'll pack it a lot neater. Yeah, it'll be wrapped up with a little bit of masking tape to pull straight out perfectly. But That'll take time, and there's no point in doing it now. Oh, you know what we forgot? The chute release and the chute. Yeah. So. I'll use I'll use that for the uh, nose cone part, and then it's complete. It's put together. Nice branding. Nice branding there.